Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship. Thank you. You're welcome, Ken. Who ever said that? <laughs> Wonderful. That's good. So welcome to worship. Uh, we continue to uh, celebrate being able to gather together and go, glad to see so many of you out here on, a, on our first Sunday in August already. Wow. And uh, just great to be together and laying eyes on all of you today. So, and uh, blessings to everybody who will be listening to this at home later on, uh, on online. So we want to encourage that that's still taking place. We typically upload the service by about 2.30 in the afternoon. It just depends on our internet speeds at the time. So uh, if you have family or friends that are, are trying to catch that and find out what time that, that is, it's between that kind of 2.30, 3 o'clock time range. So, And then it's on there for, for the duration. So, A couple announcements we want to lift up to you uh, this morning that are on the screen. Again, Liberty Quartet will be here next Sunday. Woo! Wow. Okay. Well, that wasn't quite, quite as energetic. Uh, we're still trying to work out the particulars. We may even uh, do it outside. Uh, maybe what one of the options will be on the on the north lawn there. So we're working out some particulars with the quartet as well as what we might be able to offer to make that happen. So uh, keep keep watching for your emails. We'll we'll, we'll uh, get that out by Wednesday, no later than what the details of that will be. And and but we know they're a great group. Get a lot of people come and, and follow <clears throat> follow with them. So. Uh, we want to be able to, to make plenty of space for, for their being with us. The second announcement is the CPR course that we're going to be offering here on Saturday, August 15th. Uh, we sell about, I think, five or six openings for that. So if you would like to take, um, it's a basic first aid, CPR, and they also train in childhood choking and one other thing as well. It's uh, taught by a certified instructor, but it's not a certification class so if you're needing to get your certification updated that it wouldn't meet that requirement but it does help us with our safety team and it might help you in your different environments as well uh, it's fifteen dollars for the, the course and it'll be right here so if you want to take that please get in touch with me this week because it's kind of our deadline week to to get the people signed up so our third announcement is communion this morning and then we'll get to our persecuted church a communion this morning you will notice bread in your cup today Woo! Isn't that great? And I think it's Merle and, uh, Merle and Maggie were the bed break, bread bakers this week. Yay. Yep. And, uh, and Mona and Ardella were the bread cubers. So that's, that's just as an important part to play. So should not be any problem finding your bread this morning. A reminder, as we commune this morning, you'll be uh, dismissed by your row by the ushers. And you'll come up, you'll take your bread from that place. There's uh, gluten-free in the middle, and then the juice and wine are in the trays. And so you, you can take part in that. So exciting changes. We pray for the church in Laos again uh, today. We prayed for them last week with a couple other congregations or a couple other nations, but I just wanted to update you um, on this one we received this week. Seven families from two tribal groups are nearing starvation after village authorities confiscated their farmland because of their faith in Christ. About 50 people from the Kamu and Hmong tribes form the seven families. Their faith is strong and everyone is actively serving one another and the Lord, wrote a voice of the martyr's partner. The families are experiencing severe persecution, however. Authorities have taken their land, do not allow them to farm, and when the village experienced a drought earlier this year, the government distributed rice to everyone except the Christians. Authorities told them that if they want to help, they must renounce their faith. Presently, the Christian families are in a dire situation. Um, they have tried to dig up yam and hunt for jungle animal uh, to sell in order to get rice to eat. Please, we pray for them this morning that they would receive food as well as a place for them to uh, hold their weekly worship. So let us pray for our brothers and sisters. Father God, we, we thank you that you have not lost sight of them, even though many may feel that way right now. And, and we just pray for your presence to encourage them and to stir up their faith. We thank you for ministries like Voice of the Martyrs and Open Doors who identify these situations and come alongside these families and find ways to support and help them. But Lord, we lift up our prayers to you now too and trust you, uh, Father God, that you, <clears throat> you are a father to the orphans and you are uh, a caregiver to those in need. And so uh, we trust you uh, with, with their needs and, and we trust you to, to, to direct us in how we can best pray for them and serve them and um, help ministries like Voice of the Martyrs with these particular families. Help us, Lord God, to uh, continue to love our, uh, our brothers and sisters around the world and to uh, love even their persecutors, Lord God, so that they too may know the good news and the hope of your salvation. 
and it's found only in your son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. So this morning, uh, as we begin worship, we're going to do it a little differently. I know that's like you're going, another different thing, right? <laughs> uh, but this morning, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you to remain, be remain, <clears throat> I'm going to ask you to remain seated. Yeah, that's proper. I was going to say to be seated, but anyway. Um, and we're going to, we're going to read through Psalm 46 uh, together. Psalm 46 is one of the many psalms in scripture that has uh, sections of the psalm separated uh, with the word selah, S-E-L-A-H. And in Hebrew, the word selah has two uh, really distinct meanings. And the words of the psalm will be up on the screen, so you don't need to worry about looking that up, sorry. Um, and so we'll read a portion of the psalm, and then when we get to the portion that says selah, we're just going to take a few moments to do what that means. So the word selah means to pause. It means, it literally means an interruption. So it can sometimes mean that something interrupts us, uh, but it's also uh, the, the exercise or the kind of the spiritual habit of just taking a few moments and letting what we've just read soak in and see what God may want to lift up in those passages before we rush into the next part of the, the verse. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, the word also means uh, not only interruption or pause, but it means to lift up and exalt. And so at the same time, we're kind of taking that sigh and that, that, that pause to, to consider what the scriptures may reveal. We're also using that time to thank God for what that particular part of the passage reveals about who he is to us. And that may be different for everyone. So that's, that's the wonderful thing about the word of God. It's living, it's active, right? And so we just want to take enough pause this morning as we read through uh, Psalm 46 to, to see what the Spirit may want to reveal to us this morning. So I just, be comfortable and we'll, we'll put up the first section of the Psalm now on the screen and read this together. And then at the end it says, pause and so we'll, we'll wait a few moments and I'll just kind of give Lee a nod and we'll move on to the next section so please read with me God is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble therefore we will not fear though the earth should change and though the mountains slip into the heart of the sea though its waters roar and foam though the mountains quake at its swelling pride Selah There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy dwelling places of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, and she will not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations made an uproar, the kingdoms tottered. He raised his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our stronghold. Selah. desolations in the earth. He makes wars to cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariots with fire. Cease striving and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Selah.
Please stand with us.
first lesson is from the 55th chapter of Isaiah, verses 1 through 5. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk, without money and without cost. Why do you spend money for what is not bread, and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight in your abundance. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen that you may live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, according to the faithful mercies shown to David. Behold, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. Behold, you will call a nation you do not know, and a nation which knows you not will run to you, because of the Lord your God, even the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. The second lesson is from the ninth chapter of Romans, beginning with the first verse. I am telling the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience testifies with me in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and a, an unceasing grief in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed, separated from Christ for the sake of my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites to whom belong the adopted adoption as sons, and the glory and the covenant and the giving of the law, and the temple service, and the promises. Whose are the fathers, and from whom is the Christ according to the flesh? Who is over all? God bless it forever. Amen. But it is not as though the word of God has failed, for they are not all Israel who descended from Israel, nor are they all children, because they are Abraham's descendants, but through Isaac your descendants will be named. That is, it is not the children of the flesh who are the children of God, but the children of the promise as regarded, are regarded as descendants. For this is the word of promise. At this time I will come, and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but there was Rebekah also, when she had conceived twins by one man, our father Isaac. For though the twins were not yet born, and had not done anything good or bad, so that God's purpose according to his choice would stand, not because of the works, but because of him who calls, it was said to her, the older will serve the younger. For as it is written, Jacob I loved, and Esau I hated. Here ends the reading. Mm -hmm. Stories of the Bible. Jesus feeds the 5,000. This is Jesus. Hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love. He did many miracles and healed people of their sickness. A huge crowd kept following him wherever he went because they saw his miraculous signs as he healed the sick. The crowd started to gather around Jesus. There were 5,000 men and many more women and children. Turning to Philip, he asked, Hey, Philip! Where can we buy bread to feed all these people? You see, Jesus was testing Philip, for he already knew what he was going to do. Uh... Philip replied, Even if we worked for months, 
we wouldn't have enough money to feed them. Dude, I got an idea. Then Andrew spoke up. There's a young boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. But what good is that with this huge crowd? Jesus said, tell everyone to sit down. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks to God, and gave them to the people. There you go. Afterward, he did the same with the fish, and they all ate as much as they wanted. What's the more? I'm all good, thanks. After everyone was full, Jesus told his disciples, Now gather the leftovers, so that nothing is wasted. You're good. So they picked up the pieces and filled twelve baskets with scraps, left by the people who had eaten from the five barley loaves and two fish. chapter 14, beginning at the 13th verse. And now when Jesus heard about John, he withdrew from there in a boat to a secluded place by himself. And when the people heard of this, they followed him on foot from the cities. And when he went ashore, he saw a large crowd and felt compassion for them and healed their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, this place is desolate 
and the hour is already late. So send the crowds away, that they may go into the village and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said to them, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. They said to him, we have here only five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. Ordering the people to sit down on the grass, he took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up toward heaven, he blessed the food. And breaking the loaves, he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And they all ate and were satisfied, and they picked up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve full baskets. And there were about 5,000 men who ate besides women and children. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Pretty familiar account again, right? We've, we've heard this one just a year ago, if you're keeping track, uh, in the cycle of the readings of, of Scripture called the lectionary. And so we're back in Matthew's account of this. What Matthew, what stood out to Matthew as uh, he witnessed, well, in his witness, he was there for this, right? He was part of the crowd uh, of disciples taking part in what was going on. And, and it begins, the gospel begins with kind of setting up the scene. And, and the, the verses right before that fill in a little bit more that they had just gotten word that John the Baptist had been beheaded. And so Jesus' Jesus' cousin is what we're guessing the relationship was between the two, uh, has been killed, and now Jesus wants to kind of get away for a little bit with the disciples, says to a secluded place to, to grieve, I would guess, right? That would be the normal thing. Jesus grieved. But instead, the crowds continued to follow. Have you ever been that way? Have you ever tried to get away and just couldn't? You ever, you ever planned for something and then something else interrupts it or, or disrupts the plan you had? And, and it, was, it was a really good thing you had planned. You really needed to get away. You really needed this fill in the blank to happen to just kind of refresh and restore yourself. And instead, you were met with even more stuff, right? You're trying to, you're trying to get restored and instead you're, you're, you're heaped up on it, feels like. And that's kind of what is happening here with Jesus. And, and he sees the crowds. And, and he heals the sick, and then they get hungry, and then the disciples want to send them away. And Jesus says, you, we've heard all these stories before. But to me this time, what stood out in this account is kind of three pairs of things. Okay? The, the first is kind of where we fit into the story. And, and I won't tell you where you fit in. You, a great practice of reading scriptures sometimes, especially these gospel accounts, is to read through them two, three, even four times. And each time... Pause, Selah, right? Long enough to ask God to show you something in there. Where, you know, a question to ask is, Jesus, where am I in this story? You know, hope, hopefully none of you get back, you're Jesus, right? That would be, oh, really? Wow. Then you want to call for some help. But, um, <laughs> because that's one character you're not in the story, for sure. But there are a lot of other people in this account that, that are that are part of these stories. There's the crowds that have gathered, that and, and, and the, those who had come to Jesus who were sick and were just hoping to get a touch. There were, there were others who were coming to listen to his teaching. There are the disciples, and they have a wide array of personalities and character qualities and needs and things like that, too. But to me, when, when I, as I read through this again, that uh, the first thing that stood out to me was they're hungry. Now, I'm the kind of, I, I'm the body type that gets hangry when I get hungry. It's taken a few years to, for me to, to understand that about myself and admit it, but it's true. And Chris helps me keep that in check sometimes. And sometimes that even makes me more hangry when she says, have you eaten? Right? But it's a great question because if I'm getting grumpy, there needs to be a word for that. Maybe it's humpy. I'm, I'm hungry and grumpy at the same time. I don't know, or lumpy. But, 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 but the crowd was, was hungry. And, and the disciples obviously were very hungry. Food was on their thought, right? Because here they are with the crowds. Jesus has healed a bunch of their sick. And now the disciples are concerned about dinner time. Anybody live for the next meal? I can be honest. Come on. Right? And so they're hungry. But look at, look at their perspective on when they're hungry, right? Their answer to being hungry was what? Jesus, send everybody away so we can eat. Because they had five loaves and two fish. That would, that would probably be enough for 12, oh, Jesus too. Yeah, we'll let him eat. Um, 
Five loaves and two fish is all they had. And so they, they were hopefully thinking we have enough for us, but we don't have enough for them. And when you're hungry, you're not thinking about many other people except you. Your stomach. And they're hungry. Yeah, the scripture talks about that when, when our God becomes our stomach and we're driven by our appetites and our hungers rather than taking those to Jesus and letting him fill them. And so, so we have these disciples that I can really identify with. They're hungry and they're not making very good decisions. And they're, they're, it moves them into the next stage, right? They're, they're, they're grumpy. They're, they're, they, they just want to get rid of the crowd. So that's the second thing about these disciples is that, that they want to quickly disperse the crowd. They want to get rid of any challenge especially to their little bit of food, right? And five loaves doesn't mean like, you know, the sliced preload. I mean, five loaves was like, like, um, well, five loaves would have gone just fine for 12 people at last one. Anyway, so it moves them into the second stage. They're ready to get rid of people. They, they don't want to be around people anymore. Anybody ever feel that way? Right? I mean, it's okay. It's not a sin to need some space from time to time. But the disciples in particular, because they're hungry, and all they can see is five loaves and two fish, right? They got to protect what they got. Jesus, we, we got to send them away because we, they're hungry, <laughs> right? They need to eat and, and they need to go take care of themselves. And so they send the crowds away. They dismiss the crowds. They, they, they want to um, uh, just kind of label the crowd as being one thing and then just get rid of them, right? And I think we, we're doing that a lot right now in our world, right? We're labeling groups of people and just wanting them to go away. Yeah. I just don't want to have to deal with fill in the blank. I don't want to deal with this opinion or this situation or this government mandate or this, this particular conspiracy or this whatever. And you, you, you go on, uh, you don't fast from social media for a while so you're not inundated with, with everybody who wants to share their thought and opinion on everything, right? And we get angry. We got what we want. And you guys go find your own way. Which then leads into the, the third thing that happens when you, when you get hungry and when you start dismissing people. Is then you start to realize and come to grips with the fact of how inadequate you feel. So often for me when, when I get in that space, not just when I'm hungry, but when I, when I feel like just send everybody away. It's because I feel like I don't have anything else to give. I don't, I don't know how to respond to this. I don't know how to react anymore. I don't want to share any more opinions. I don't want to... Come up with the solution or the answer, whatever, again, fill in the blank place you are. And we finally get to a place where now we might be able to recognize Jesus. When we finally get to that honest moment of realizing we feel like we don't have enough for ourselves. I'm hungry. I don't want to really share it with anybody else. Go away. Right. And then finally realizing I, I don't know what else to do. And then Jesus shows up, right? Amen. The first thing the account in this morning's lesson talks about Jesus, his attitude was, even in the midst of grieving his cousin's execution, it says he looked at the crowds and felt compassion. Right? He begins to remind us that we've got to approach all those things, our hunger, our, our wanting, wanting to just push everyone away, all our inadequacies. We've got to, we've got to get back to the heart of the one who first loves us, right? And have his love begin to invade all those empty places. Jesus needs to come in and fill my hunger. Jesus needs to come in and remind me who I am and that he's not about to dismiss me and that he will fill in all the inadequacy that I may be feeling about something. And the next thing that Jesus does, right? I love what he does with the disciples, right? They want to send everybody away. What does Jesus tell them to do? Right, go feed it. He, he gives them some instructions. He commissions them. It's kind of a mini commission. Right, he says, no, we're not going to send them away. You're going to feed them. And, and, and have, the, have the crowd sit down and give me, give, me the, give me what we have left. Right? Now, in one account, it reminds us that it was a, a young boy who had the five loaves and two fish. Matthew doesn't seem to remember that part. But they get the five loaves and two fish. Right? Maybe they abducted the boy on the way to the... I don't know, because he had food, right? I don't know, right? They're hangry, remember. Anyway, so, so they get the five loaves and two fish, and then Jesus blesses it and breaks it. And now what was once not enough for hardly even the 12 becomes enough for everyone. Right. Two key things had to happen, though, as Jesus provides, right? It's, it's, it's blessed, and then it's 
broken. Mm -hmm. We like the blessed part. Yeah. How you how you how do you like the broken part? Not so much. Not so much, right? But that's how Jesus works and deals with us. He he blesses us. He he fills us. He provides us with more than enough. And then in the breaking, we all we have is him. All we have is, is enough to give to everyone. We, we're no longer hoarding the little bit of bread we have. Now we have more than enough. And to boot, Jesus provides how many leftovers at the end? Twelve thousand. How many disciples? Twelve. Poor boy must have got left out, right? <laughs> boy that gave his lunch, right? He's like, wait, he had enough. He had food. But see, that's the, that's the thing we're in. We, 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 times like this right now have exposed, at least in me, my idolatry of the things I have been depending on to be enough for me. Enough freedom, enough do whatever I want to do, enough money, enough food, enough whatever the enough is that you feel like if I just had enough of this, then I'll be happy. If I had just enough. Of, and it exposes that unless the enough I have is Jesus, everything else will be inadequate. It'll never be enough. In fact, it goes sour when I try to hoard it. And I grasp and I grab and I try to, to cling on to things that Jesus wants to just freely pour into me and through me for the sake of others. Right? Jesus isn't interested in just feeding my hunger, but feeding the hunger of all who are in need, inadequate. And the good news is the crowd that Jesus had compassion on included the 12 disciples at that moment of their hangriness and their inadequacy and their perspective of wanting to send everybody away. He had compassion on them too and healed their hearts and, and showed them as he commissioned them to feed the crowds that if you trust me, I will be your provider. And not just for you, but for all those and all the needs you will see around you. What would that look like if the church really trusted Jesus with all that's happening right now? What would happen if we dared to tell other people we're trusting Jesus? We're not, we're not going to just trust in whatever the latest scientific opinion is or the latest data or the latest social injustice. But we're going to say, you know what? All those things have been mentioned. We read in the psalm this morning, right? Did it sound like our life? Mountains quake, kingdoms totter, governments fail, all these things. It's nothing new, but we treat it like, oh, this is the first time. No. Throughout history, God's people have learned to trust not in the chariots and the pension plans and the money and the next government official and the next law passed, but in God. That's where they finally find their sufficiency. That's where they finally find their strength. That's where they finally find their hope. What if we began posting that? Refusing to get into the fray, into the arguments, and instead reminding people, but we have a God who has seen people through these kind of times throughout the history of mankind. This is a time more than ever before to turn to, to the one who knows how to walk us through all these troubles and trials and struggles and all the unknown answers and all the questions we have. We take, to, take it to Jesus, and guess what? He becomes our peace, even in the midst of the turmoil. We have a time, like I've shared before, like, like none other maybe in our generation, to, to, to shout out that good news to others at a time where the world is desperate for that. Because I believe the world really isn't desperate for fighting. They're desperate for finding hope. Exactly. And we have it because he has us. We, we, are, we are the people that, that should, should be the, the brightest bulb on the planet right now. Because we offer hope. We offer a God who is faithful. We offer a God who knows our hungers and our inadequacies and our frustrations and, and our compulsions to want to be away from everybody. But instead calls us back to himself. Even as we gather at his table again this morning, remind us we have a God who knows how to bless and to be broken for us. So that when he calls upon us to be broken for others, we have more than enough, more than enough to give. So, Father God, I pray this morning you, you would remind us of, of your provision for us. You would remind us of your compassion. The same compassion you have for us that can now spill over into the lives of others we encounter this week.
Lord, you have, you have prepared appointments for us throughout this week with people that we're going to encounter, Lord God. Appointments, uh, divine appointments where we can show your hope and love. Help us be ready for that. Help us see that when we're when we are hungry or angry or whatever, that, that, that let that be a trigger instead of reacting in like kind, Lord, we, we turn to you and, and have those things provided for us so that we can now release the blessing that you have poured out in and through us. And Lord, most of all, help us to be eager to share the love and hope of Jesus with others. Thank you that you are a God who is faithful, a God who is our refuge and strength, a God who is abundantly available for help. May we rest in that interruption today, the interruption of your gospel, your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Please stand with me as we <coughs> sing our next song, Break Now the Bread of Life, number 235 in your dream songs. Father God, as you give uh, your church now to the world, as you give the body of your son Jesus, 
should give believers into this world, Lord, to, to, to take forth the hope and love that is Jesus. I pray this morning again you would strengthen us, encourage us. Lord, fill all those places in us that are empty and hungry, all those places that are confused and frustrated. And Lord, that we would take every question, every, every frustration to you. Lord, that we would allow you space in our thoughts and in our hearts this day, Lord God, to, to correct and to commission us again to, to be the, the light and the hope in the world. Lord, you fill us fresh again, I pray, with your Holy Spirit. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. The same power. The same hope. The same love now flows in us and through us toward others. May it show up in great and powerful ways this week to our neighbors, to, to the people we share our homes with, to, to the, the, the checkout clerk at the grocery store, Lord, to, to those we encounter, those divine appointments you have for us today. May your love for them well up within us, your compassion fill us and lead, lead us in those conversations and those, those, uh, those times together with others. Lord, may we dare to, to, to be courageous as our brothers and sisters in Laos, Lord, that no matter what the consequence of this life, whatever the consequence of this world of governments and laws and orders, whatever, no matter the, the principalities of this place, Lord God, None of it compares with knowing you and trusting you in the kingdom you are preparing for us. So may that hope and life shine through in all the things and all the encounters we have this week. Lord, thank you so much for the many ministry partnerships we have in this community to, to help carry out uh, the truth of, of your kingdom to others. Lord, we, we lift up Luther Haven, Summit Christian Academy, Family Promise, Orchard Ridge, Champs Heart, Food Banks, Union Gospel Mission, Safe Passage, Ecumenical Food Kitchen, Open Arms, Uganda Medical Mission, Voice of the Martyrs, The Good Samaritan Rehab, Operation Christmas Child, and Lutheran Congregations and Mission for Christ. May those ministries be encouraged again today too, Lord God, as they go into the world to proclaim your hope and love in tangible ways. And Father God, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that, that does give us the same power that rose Jesus from the dead, that commanded the sick to be well, that brought hope uh, to, to the discouraged, Lord God. And, and this morning we lift up to those who are in need of your healing and encouragement and comfort. We pray for Kristen Gorman, Hill Fundheller, Jan Johnson, Chris Clark, Frank Daly, Daryl Carlson, Karen Woods, and others we name either aloud or in our hearts. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. His betrayal, our Lord took bread. He broke it as he blessed it, and then he said, My body broken for you is what this means. Remember now, my children, what you have seen. And then he took the chalice and raised it high. My blood is poured out for you, a full supply, a covenant, a promise, a cleansing stream. Remember now, my children, what you have seen. We share this food together, remembering Christ. We share a common treasure and all the we share it without measure, a gift of love. We share our life forever with God above. Our 
Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. This is the Lord's table. All who believe in Jesus Christ are welcome to come and take his body and his blood. So please come. All is right.
<laughs> and now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you unto life everlasting. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Join me as we sing our closing song, number 501, He Leadeth Me. Thank you.